Hi there! Andy and I are making some Kool-Aid. First, we're going to add some sugar. Then we're going to add a packet of flavoring. Hmm. This doesn't look like fruit punch to me. We need to mix it. Right. Right now, this is a heterogeneous mixture of Kool-Aid, sugar, and water. I know it's heterogeneous because the mixture is not uniform. Given enough time, will this mixture homogenize on its own? Well, sure. Everything we added is water soluble. Eventually, the sugar, the Kool-Aid mix and the water will homogenize and form a completely uniform mixture. But that's going to take a lot of time, so we're going to add a little agitation to speed it up. All the way down and just start stirring. All right, now look at this mixture. If I take a sample from any part of this mixture, it will have the same properties, including taste. It is completely homogenous. We call this type of mixture a solution. And that is the topic of this video series. Science is real from the Big Bang to the Mmm. What a yummy solution. Now that we know how to define the term solution, we need to examine the chemistry of how a solution actually forms. Sure, we know everything's all mixed up in there, but let's take a closer look. What are you Here you see a sugar molecule, sucrose. I'm going to shrink this molecule down and convert it into an image of its crystalline form. Now when I drop a sucrose crystal in a container of water, the games begin. The massive amount of water molecules are able to overwhelm the organization of the lattice and break it apart, causing it to dissolve. We can look at this from a thermodynamic view to really explain the chemistry of how and why this happens. Here you see our sucrose crystal and our liquid water. We know from our previous studies that there are intermolecular forces of attraction present between the sucrose molecules allowing it to maintain that lattice. But what kind? Well, let's take a closer look. Look at all of these hydroxyl groups on this big polar molecule. Likewise, the liquid water has its own intermolecular forces present between the molecules that allow it to maintain this liquid state at room temperature. Well, what happens to these attractions when the sugar crystal is dropped in the liquid water? Competition. There are basically three steps when considering the thermodynamics of forming a solution. Step one, separating the lattice by overcoming those attractive forces holding it together. This is going to require those molecules at the lattice points to absorb some energy. It's going to be an endothermic process. Step two, spacing out the solvent by overcoming the attractive forces holding it together. Again, that is going to require energy to overcome the net of attraction already established. This step is also endothermic. Finally, step three, the interaction of the solute and solvent particles to create a solution. Generally, this step is exothermic in that any intermolecular forces are allowed to establish themselves increasing the overall stability of the system that has been forced apart in the previous two steps. When you add these three steps together, 
separating the solute solute attractions, separating the solvent solvent attractions, and then finally bringing together the solute solvent attractions, you end up with the enthalpy of solution. This overall value can be positive and endothermic, requiring an overall addition of energy to the system, or it can be negative and exothermic, releasing energy as the solution forms. It all depends on what you are dissolving. Does this mean that if I create a mixture with a positive enthalpy of solution, that the solution won't form? If you said yes, then you are forgetting one very important consideration when discussing thermodynamics. Entropy! Entropy. Remember, the enthalpy component is only one part of determining if a reaction will happen. We also have to consider the change in entropy involved. Thinking about the before and after situation of creating our solution, which is all that matters because remember, changes in free energy, enthalpy, and entropy are all state functions. Anytime you make a solution, you increase the disorder of the system. That means the change in entropy will always be a positive value. In the end, as long as the enthalpy of solution isn't too positive, the change in free energy will still be negative and you will get your solution. Great! Now you hopefully have a mental image of how a solution forms, as well as a sense of why it forms, thermodynamically speaking. I hope you also picked up some of the vocabulary you're expected to use during this unit, such as solute, solvent, solution, homogeneous, heterogeneous, and enthalpy of solution. When we meet to discuss this in class, be sure to be familiar with the quantitative ways of describing a solution mentioned at the very beginning of this chapter. We've already discussed molarity, but now you need to add molality, mole fraction, and mass percent to your list of ways of quantitatively describing a solution. Well, I guess that's all for now. See you in class. Science is real. Cheers. Oh, that tastes terrible. <laughs>